Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the Startup Saturday. Our guest today is uh, Visham. Visham Sikand uh, is two times entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. He's what he calls himself. And uh, I met uh, uh, Visham through an interesting venture that he's recently uh, sold, his second venture, in fact. And we're going to walk a little through his journey as a, as a Harvard man and then uh, all of the things he's done, uh, including being on the cover of Business Today and, uh, you know, very... Um, uh, I think very acknowledged uh, as an interesting startup founder. So uh, welcome, Visham, and uh, thank you for coming and talking to us at Lumiere. Thank you so much, Deepa. And I love the introduction. Being on the cover of the magazine seems to be my introduction, but I have a lot more interesting things to talk about. I'll talk about them as well. And one, one added, added thing, the new, new terminology for a serial entrepreneur is if you've done one business, X, if you've done two, it's two X, it's triple X. So if you've done three X, you are a three X entrepreneur. So the new words are these uh, for the So I, I, this is my third company that I've exited. Yeah. This is the third one. Okay. When did you know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Does anyone know that? Oh yeah, you know what? I, I was quite young in my school. So uh, my first seven years I was in Nigeria. My dad was in the government. And then uh, everywhere, every event that happened in school, I wanted to be doing something on the business side. So. It, my teacher would say, would you like to do something on drama? I would say, hey, ma'am, can I sell my these two dinky cars? So I always had that and my dad used to keep telling me all throughout that, hey, you know what, this guy will be, become an industrialist. So the, uh, the thing that your parents keep telling you regularly, reinforcing you sometimes uh, pick up and come into you. So I throughout my childhood, I always realized that I want to become an entrepreneur. So it was very early in my, in my life that I thought of that. And how did that influence your educational choices? Uh, did you choose did schools? It, yeah, it did a lot. For example, uh, after my then I came back and started in Bombay and Delhi. Delhi was GPS Artipuram, quite geeky. And even if I had a choice between going for a table tennis game uh, versus education, I chose education, sadly, because that's how GPS Artipuram brings you up. And uh, then I wanted to do economics because I thought economics was good straight away. So BBA was still coming up in India in 2095, in that few years. So I didn't know too much about BBA. So I th thought I would do economics. Then somehow I thought if I want to be an industrialist, I should do engineering. So that's how it started playing in my mind. And then I thought a general industry industry would be either a mechanical engineer or electrical or a chemical engineer. So I chose to be a chemical engineer from one of the REC colleges. It's called Punjab Engineering College. So it was that, that's what I took an entrance and got through that. And uh, then I wanted to obviously do an MBA because that definitely chisels you up for the uh, world, which is like really uh, cutting edge uh, in the in the business space and did my first MBA in India. And uh, yeah, so that's how. So in my education, in my mind, it was always that, hey, will this help me become an industrialist? Will this help me get a job where I will learn how to become an industrialist? Yeah, so I have a story on that. I'll talk to you about it whenever you ask. So when you had industrialist, uh, you know, in, in mind, uh, what is it in terms of size, scale? Did you have some things like that? Or did you have role models uh, who you wanted to fashion your uh, life after? Uh, so uh, uh, frankly, very truthful. When I used to dream, I used to dream of uh, industry as in a physical industry. That's so what I wanted time, to know. Yes. When you were like when you're 17, 18 at that age, startups in India was not a word, right? startups anything everything was an industry either a shop or an industry right so i was nothing in between nothing in between so industrial in so so i always thought of having manufacturing slash defense manufacturing industry uh something like that so whenever somebody used to say so not individually inspired by anyone but somebody would say i'm in the shipping world so i said hey not bad that sounds big so i, I used to study about shipping so what what how do people build, build private boards? So I would study those kind of things more than anything else. So yeah, so throughout, I used to have this thing, will this add to me becoming an entrepreneur tomorrow? If I do my job today, what I've done, will this allow me to learn more about HR? Will this learn me more about finance? So everything that I was doing in my mind, it was always that, hey, will this allow me to finally set my own thing? Very and clear. It, was, it was, I guess, something about opportunities, learning and saying, what is it I can do by learning about this and leveraging this opportunity with an idea? Is that yes. how your mind works? So yeah, when you, when when you think so much, so you you have to keep thinking of an idea parallel to your whatever you're working towards. So I used to like doing that. So when I was when I swim, for example, I just came from a swim. 
when I'm swimming, when I'm going under the water, I'm thinking of an idea. I'm thinking, hey, what can I do in my business today? What can I do of my uh, uh, next next new idea? So I like to do it that way. So, but when you say childhood dreams, it was not. It was reinforcement by my dad to be absolutely precise that he used to always say, hey, this this kid will of mine will become an industrialist. And I have a thing, small thing to tell to parents also. So my dad put all the three kids in three different schools to build three different personalities. So this is something which is very rare. Everybody is lazy enough to put two kids in the same school to say, hey, you know what, it's easy, right? He put one of the important school, his sister was in the convent school, and I was in DPS. And all three of us have become extremely different personalities and different fields. So reinforcement from there till every day, I used to keep thinking of it. That and it was every day, literally. It was not that if I'm on a break or I'm attending somebody's marriage of a cousin that I was not thinking of it. So every day reinforcement in my mind Plus thinking innovatively, I think the multiplication of this really led to a, a good outcome. That's that's very, very curious and uh, very interesting because uh, he obviously had a goal and a plan. So when you sit from an, from an entrepreneurial lens, the mm -hmm. seed that he planted in you was the fact that you can do this. And it was almost yeah. like a self-fulfilling prophecy for you. Yeah, and he never told me that you have to be an engineer. He told me that, hey, you can be an industrialist. So the goal mm -hmm. was, he was telling me the path that I had to take because all the kids are told you have to become a doctor, you have to become an engineer or a CA to earn your money. He said, hey, you know what? I think you can be a big industrialist in the country. And he let the path be decided by me. So I think that gave me the freedom to think myself. So one, if I have to tease out a value, one is, you know, like begin with an end in view as uh, Stephen Covey says. So there was almost an end in view to that your dad had planted. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, that, 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 probably that's a good word to put it across. Yes, I had the end very clearly in my mind. And today also after the exit, sometimes I always think after this exit, I won't work. Then I come back to the fact that, hey, I still haven't opened the big industry. So obviously industry can be defined very differently in today's world. And finally, I've been invested in a company which is going to be something in that space. So. Happy to be doing that finally. But yeah, all the three startups, uh, whatever you call it, big scale, small scale, medium scale, have done very well with the thought of the end goal being that I'm going to be an entrepreneur. So the start, the first time, uh, you know, you started up, uh, mm -hmm. what was the thought in the context of your dreams and aspirations? So, you know, so I just want to say how long was this cooking in your mind? So, uh, after my first MBA from MDI Gurgaon, uh, when I got, I was, so I was, when the placements were happening, it was 2002, 2001 was September 11, everybody's worried about the placement. I wasn't worried. I was actually dancing on this uh, so a movie called Til Chata Hai. I used to jump up and down because I was quite confident of a taking an interview, right? So when Maruti came to our office and uh, it's a story that you can really uh, talk about. So they said, hey, you come to a regular job, which was a 5.2 lakh rupee packet. It was very good in 2002. And join the regular MBAs, dealership. And so I went to the HR head and, and said, hey, I don't want to join the regular business. I've heard Maruti has a new business line called True Value Solutions. So they said, hey, we don't take category A campus. We take category B because you pay only 3.6 lakh and your campus doesn't allow differential, right? If you remember the MBA days. So I, see, I said, look, I don't want to join the regular one. I'm okay with a salary cut, but I want to learn the new business. So then they brought Mr. R.S. Kalsi, who's currently the ED of Maruti. He was the MD and ED of Maruti, and he currently is the ED of Maruti. And he said, this kid wants to do this, and he's taking an approval from his team. So he took me in his personal team, and that's where I learned in my first job itself, two years, I learned how to do big small businesses in a big company. And today, with every HR batch that Maruti joins, Mr. R.S. Kelsey gives this example for the last 22 years. There was a kid who we offered a higher package, but he clearly knew that he wanted to be an entrepreneur. He told me also that he'll work only for two years. And I and Maruti, it's like a semi-PSC, right? You can't tell them that you're going to work for two years and leave the company. But I told him, and I told him to post me in the most difficult places like uh, Northeast of India, Calcutta, to launch a new business over there is very difficult. So... Coming to the clarity of it, this was the first instance where I took a bold step to say that, hey, I'm going to join a lesser package and go for uh, something like this and told the boss that I'm going to do this. And the interesting change was when I was 27 years old, 28 years old, I got married and I was an AB and AMRO doing very well, a 28 lakh we package at that time. It was really, really well. And my wife one day said, hey, your personal EMI is so high compared to the kind of salary you get. And I got recently married six months ago. 
so in my mind that night itself i said hey now i'm going to go she was an entrepreneur before me so i decided that now i'll become an entrepreneur and prove it to her first that you know i was meant for much much bigger things that then in 28 after a vibes input to me saying that hey you know what your salary versus your emi do not match was my instigation to leave my job in the next month and then start my first business very very interesting huh? yeah. so this also gives me another take away uh, mm-hmm. saying what is it that you are able to see as trade offs and sure. how do you weigh short term gain short term pain versus what is it in the path of your goals yeah i totally tell everyone the short term view is very short term like and you continue with that view then obviously i'm sure you'll do well in the corporate world short term is too short term and we have such a long life i'm just 45 plus now and i've already exited the company so i still believe that hey there's so much more to do and i'm just saying so yeah so there's a lot of life there's a lot of years so do not think short term is right what are the job, kind of how do you uh, weigh fear and fears of failure and risk what kind of appetites and how does that get built for an entrepreneur and what was your way of looking at your fears in your face how do you talk to yourself aspects, which i think one of the aspects people do not talk about especially entrepreneur one is obviously there's a physical impact if you want to wake up 4 am because you not slept well you want to work extra hours compared to the corporate world so there is a impact on your physical side so i really encourage everyone to have two aspects one obviously really focus on your health balance to being an entrepreneur and second make your heart made of stone so do not get worried here every day you're going to hear bad news every day you're going to hear a very different the regulation change or you know what this partner went off so two aspects focus on your physical health and focus the fact that the business should not impact your heart it should impact your brain thinking but not your heart so that's one aspect of it uh um, the other aspect is on the fear side for that you have to do your homework right you have to do the two ways of homework one is a fundamental homework if you have a good education you can always fall back right the second one uh, homework is your network right if you build a network which everybody knows so deeper today knows that hey if i do want to talk to visham it has to be entrepreneur stuff he is meant for doing something big when you have two views of visham sikan as a person tomorrow i come to deepa and say hey, you know deepa i'm thinking of putting money in a company or i'm going to start a company say hey this guy is not going to easily let this company go off so i'm just saying so your network and what you put as a brand puts the fear away because you know you have done your homework so either your education is right and if you so i i really tell everyone that just, just do not jump into and start up and hey you think hey everything is going to be okay two years down the line if you just keep keep as much as your uh, uh stones or pebbles as much as possible which are there in that box so that tomorrow any sand that comes in doesn't matter i'm just saying so keep the rocks really really solid the rocks could be education your network health is the most important one and uh, so the network and what they believe of you uh, is what it should be every event every social event if i go and talk they know hey you know what this guy is going to be talking a lot of sense while he's going to have fun but he's going to lot talk a lot of sense around what the entrepreneurial world is so so yeah so building those blocks did not let me the fear come in me so i knew that i knew that i'm going to be successful let me put it that way beautiful beautiful and the one you know if you had to say three things that you know give you this confidence when you say i know i'm going to be successful because young people have so much fear there's so much apprehension today ai and i'm going to shortly come into tech which is what you've embraced now but before that i just want to pause to this thing of you worked with cards and you also started the indian health organization which is where you were recognized and health again as a sector is a you know again one which is always looking where there is an opportunity for creativity innovation in the putting the patient at the center so tell me how you forayed into health so you know you had industry in your mind and mm-hmm. how did health feature in your what well, so interesting so in mdi like you you went went to spgen in the second year i went to the dean and said hey i don't want to do the regular courses i want to do something on entrepreneurship and that time in 2001 nobody accepted that as a dean so he said okay this, we will carve out a course called Car- a course of independent studies this was one of the first students ever to go out like i don't know the rest of the mbas we did a project and the hypothesis was that that a dentist in us makes millions and india does not so i then i for a year under professor ap arora in mbi was very famous as a marketing guru i studied 
the entire concept that how many kind of health insurance are there on the dental side, what kind of plans are there. Then I replicated that saying that this can happen in India also. And I, I did a, obviously I like it's like thesis, right? I one year thesis and I presented to the class. The entire class and professor said, hey, you should dive into this business straight away because everybody was clapping by the thought of what I had built over there. And then I went back to learn the job. I said, now to get my network right, I have to get my understanding of HR, finance. When you said, what are the three ingredients? You should know the five basic fundamentals that are required to do a business, right? You have to understand what HR means. You have to understand how finance means. You have to understand how sales you are supposed to do. You have to understand how to market a business. And you have to understand how to scale up to a big level. So you have to have these couple of things as ingredients. So when I learned that, I after the first business exit, which was very linked to uh, banking, where I was in Avian Amro, the second business was Indian Health Organization. So, so my dad wanted me to go to WHO because he said something like that was also a thing that you can do. I was crossing WHO office near ITO in Delhi, and I said I'm going to launch a company called Indian Health Organization. That was my after the first exit. If you know to take a name Indian in a company in India, you have to pay a 50 lakh capital. I don't know if you all of you know that. Yes. So I took a special approval because taking a name like Indian Health Organization sounds so so governmentish. Government. I went with twenty eight times applications to the corporate affairs office to say they keep kept rejecting. Yes, why are you rejecting it for me? Why can't I get this name? So finally, the company is called Indian Health Organization Private Limited. Ran it just for two and a half years. Got acquired by the second biggest health company of the world called Aetna. It's a Fortune thirty two. And became became Aetna chairman at age of 32 in India, the younger chairman to a Fortune 50 company in India. That's the story from MBA, doing a course of independent studies, then launching the business after learning the ingredients of it, and then exiting to the world's second biggest insurance company in the world. So Aetna the, is what uh, that that's what you did with uh, the Indian Health Organization. Yeah, yeah, that's the second exit. Yeah. Okay, and what and how long did you stay associated with Aetna? After the exit, about close to about four years, I was chairman to Aetna for four years. So was that a uh, part of the plan or that was completely uh, like okay. you had? Like, obviously, just imagine you do an MBA thesis, then you're lucky enough, God is lucky enough to let us a business. Then you're aim. So in my mind, at that time, nobody was talking exit. This I'm talking 2011, 12. Right? So I said, hey, you know what? If I exit to a Fortune 50 company, what learning I'll get? It was not just the brand building. So... It was just about also about saying, hey, how 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 can I learn to uh, work with a good big corporate as a chairman? A funny note, they used to pay us, I think, 75000 a month for just our attire. And I was like telling my friends that, hey, just imagine how did they, so calling us for World Economic Forums. And I was like, hey, what an exposure at the age of 31, 32. So the, it was for the exposure and learning how a Fortune 50 company works to get that. Terrific. And, I, and parallelly, the, the brand... Uh, was also your personal brand was also becoming oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just to tell you CNBC entrepreneur of the year ET now more than 150 articles around me uh, and these were bootstrap first two companies were bootstrap let me tell all the entrepreneurs so everybody in India wants enterprise to get venture capital funding my first two business were bootstrap cash generating and the exits on those companies are I consider that as much much bigger than an exit by the venture capital company because you took money to build it, while over here you took intellect and your hard work and network to build it. So, yeah, so the brand built up, and as you say, the cover pages of all magazine, and then this money allowed me to go to Harvard Business School, and then I did my MBA there. So I like the money. way you know you you funded your education by sending yeah, two think, startups, and that would have also been a great application story. Yeah, yeah, I did. After selling the company, I told the Aetna president. That hey, you know what? I'm gonna to go to U uh, US for, for my HBS, and then I applied for it. Luckily, I got into it. And there's a story around how what the interview HBS was. So that was very different. But yeah, so and then totally said, hey, absolutely, okay, will you be able to run it from there? I said, yes, I'll be able to run it. So we had a beautiful team back here who ran it very well. We grew it more than, more than I think more than hundred x or more than around close to thousand x now. Which Aetna? Yeah, the company in India, the Indian H ISO Aetna company. Yes. Uh, or acquired from whatever revenue they do to work close to about 100 to 1000 x to 300 x yeah so you know the idea that you put on paper and this is a general and before i come to goals 101 uh, when you put the idea on paper and then you allow organically for also things to happen right you're right. not stuck with saying how the end point is going to look Absolutely. and you're you are 
adaptable to circumstances, opportunities, new people you meet, and then suddenly you. So, what is the element of holding on to some things, and how much leeway do you give for that idea to well, proliferate? I'm, I'm quite egoistic about the fact that Vishal Singh as a brand cannot fail. So that's one aspect. That hey, you know what I've thought of it. That I cannot fail as a brand individually. If I've thought of an idea, I will keep persisting on that idea till it is successful. So I'm basically persistent on that. That's one aspect of it. And if you see any of these ideas that I've done, there was no one else doing it in the company in the country. So these were ideas thought of while I was either swimming, I was doing my trek, as I told you. So these were innovative thoughts. Not that hey, you know, this company is doing well in the U.S. Let's copy it and replicate that. These were thoughts that I said, okay. Maybe something is doing, but I can for India. I can change it like this and do it in a different way. So, yeah, yeah. So, a couple of I think the excitement of being innovative and making it successful and brand Vishal should not fail became a combination of things. Yeah. And I will come to talking about failure. They, you know, people always uh, people talk about uh, glorifying failure to say that it is very important in life because it kind of keeps you grounded. It, you know, you there is a reason why that failure happens. It allows you to course correct, and you know, just one should know that there will be some black swan events. Now, just like we explore risk, I want you, Visham, to explore failure for me and any experiences that changed uh, some perspectives or you know, made you look at things differently? Or if we look at the COVID situation, I mean, would yeah. you look at that as failure, for instance? So very interestingly, so when I started this Goals 1-1, which is my current company that I just got acquired, uh, I want to do something in technology and data because that, that was something I had done hardcore, right? So the first thing I after launching the business was apply to Berkeley to understand what data science is. So I did an uh, executive MBA plus data science program, very rare program, and went to Berkeley full time. And and during that time, we had we were progressing extremely well. And in my mind, I clearly thought that this has to be a company which is at least a triple digit million dollar company. It's broadly that. As you said, it didn't have an exact thing to do. And it was doing so well. So the world's ninth biggest company is Visa. So we had just entered a strategic partnership with Visa uh, in, in Middle East and Senior, which is about 79 countries. And I had some board member who met the Visa chairman, right, Al Khalid. And Val Kelly wrote to us, hey, I've heard you're doing great stuff. Would you look at something strategic with us? Well, like close to an MA option. And this was 2019 December. And I politely at that time I thought, you know what, whatever they'll offer me, they will not offer me close a triple digit million dollar figure right now because we were just generating revenue. But the product was amazing. And uh, so I politely said, hey, let us work for a little more time. And then we left. In March, I was in Berkeley studying well, doing well. And a professor came into the room in March 13 and said, you know what, there's a Thing that's going to go for spread across the world and 50 percent of the world is going to get affected i thought this professor to be geeky how does he even know the thing hasn't even started and around march 14 15 they asked us all to go back to our countries right so and i came back and we worked with banks suddenly banks did not do anything the banks started sitting at home bankers and did not did the credit card teams or debit card did not send out any campus because all of us started spending only in five brands like maybe a grof grocery or Amazon or a Netflix, five brands. And our company, what it does is on banks' transaction data, it sends you relevant communication that, hey, Deepa, it looks like you look from your transaction, I see you do a lot of book reading. So you'll get a lot of books rather than random McDonald's offers. Suddenly, for two and a half years, the banks were doing nothing and we were sitting at home. And I made a LinkedIn post saying, no person will be removed from Goals 101 because of COVID. So the entire funding we had got used on those three years. We had MA options from two of the world's biggest company of opportunities. We lost all of it to come back off COVID with almost zero money. And I had just a nine month window or 10 month window with the remaining money to do of an MA where the company's revenue has gone from, let's say, 100 to 10. And that's where I showed my again my hustle to go all across the globe to do an MA. And in the environment where no one, I can tell you, no one was able to do an MA, we got one of the most beautiful companies to. Virus, and now we lead it with them, and it's an amazing experience. Yeah. So, this, this so that is now, now what you're doing with uh, uh, of 250 crores worth of deal in an environment where the revenue had dipped so much, but they understood the value of the company that we're building. It's in the data and technology space. Yeah. So in this, the last five minutes, uh, if mm -hmm. you had to tell me, how did you change as a person uh, post this, the last three years of suddenly realizing that uh, this was a totally unexpected turn of events and mm -hmm. 
you know and so where are you right now and oh, what is it yeah. that how's your thought process now am i I'm, i don't know what, what i have not read the zen but i think i'm in a zen mode I, whatever that means i stay in a zen mode i'm extremely happy i i, I was just thinking i've told my friends in the last few months i've never fought with anyone in my life including my wife i've just ever with anyone in the world so just how lucky can i get on that the health is right the acquisitions have gone right the businesses have gone right so i'm in a zen mode and uh, I, when i was a kid with a great uh, government officer state there are times when you are not able to spend too much on your education sometimes so for example we, i got an exchange program in mdi to go to france but i could not even have the thing to go and tell my dad that this cost me four and a half lakhs so now the the thing that i want to give back is give it to education so any child who passes its 12th standard and wants to go for a graduation who is deserving it but cannot afford the fees can contact me and for example i just uh, yeah the iit kharagpur they just renamed the iit library on my dad's name a little bit of my thing so anything on education is what i want to do so zen modes happy investment uh, happy business and happy life plus funding the education of kids who cannot afford but deserve it. budget is not there. so the issue you want to work with is education going okay. forward mm -hmm. and supporting kids who are not privileged Yeah. Yeah. Complete. That's know, after twelfth pass. Cannot afford the graduation. No other thing. It, I get sometimes I get tempted here and there. Like yesterday, got tempted on something, but I have to try and focus. So that's I want to keep that statement here. Anybody who passes twelfth gets it. Let's say gets into an IIT, cannot afford the fees. IITs become very expensive. Or gets to a good college near this near their house, but cannot afford it. I'll fund it. You know, the philanthropists uh, you know, identify a, a focus area. Uh, now at 45 there are two parts for you one is the industry business part and the second is the the forays into philanthropy that you're uh, looking at uh, where does your heart naturally take you both ways but uh, philanthropy is a little boring let me tell you absolutely and i should not deny that because you can't if you do it full time it is not easy to do for someone like me who's used to very hard action Land fee requires patience, time, and involvement, right? So that's the first. I thought I'd build a school. Then I said, hey, that will impact only thousand, two thousand kids. So why shouldn't I build a board, which is, let's say you are in Nigeria or you are in a poor, let's say not a well-off country like Rwanda, why can't a kid over there also be funded? Like the HBS alum is so strong, so I can have people over there who lead it. And obviously, either I fund it or a group of friends fund it. But I will take the lead in that funding. I do not have a budget limit on that. So. could be anywhere anywhere starting definitely india so yeah philanthropy is not my forte uh, investing into new ideations is my forte so a lot of me is that so i'll continue doing that you know when tell us a little bit uh, just a little bit about what you do now that you have sold goals 101 what's going to be your role with the company and what's the next thing that's cooking in your head yeah. Uh, goals one one. I continue to lead it, uh, so we expect to uh, grow it by let's say at least twenty thirty x in the next two to three years. So that's one aspect, and uh, it's bought out by a company called MTP Solutions, uh, a very nice B two B banking uh, tech company, and uh, very, run by very three very nice people to wait. And one of the choice when I had from the three acquisition offers was that the founders at M two B were very nice. So I continue to lead it. Then I've invested in three or four companies which are very close to me. i'm going to incubate them also and uh, so one is in the electronic supply chain manufacturing space one is in the uh, uh, giving activities to kids very diverse one is in the credit card space reducing people's debt different spaces but all things that i'm enjoying a lot so just guiding them on the side right now and continue to lead goals one on across multiple geographies so in terms of your time mm -hmm. uh, you know you said one is it's very important to prioritize personal health does does visham sikand ever not have time in a day to do what's important to him i never i i i, today, I know i got a few minutes late for this call also i did not i had a call in the morning i had two calls in the morning not miss my gym and my swimming before i come okay came on this one so i would never miss health aspects ever whatever it takes so, so at least six days i will do my exercise i'll take my, i'll do my treks Uh, I'll do things like I went to learn to uh, what I learned. I learned to do sky, learn to do skydiving, not just do the skydiving. So I'll do my passions, 
that never comes at the cost of my work. The, the, this part doesn't come, work doesn't come at the cost of my learning and being fit. Yeah. So yeah, so that is first. And you are able to stay authentic to what's important to you, like, you know, relationships, uh, net. I think people matter a lot to you also. A lot. I do not reach home any later than seven. I try and I skip a lot of my social things for them. And, and I enjoy it. I'm doing it. I wear it for example, somebody there. I enjoy it. I like going there. I do that. Yeah, so I, that's how And you are able to focus 100% on what you're doing when you're able to do it, right? No distractions. Yeah, I do only what I like now. I do exactly what I like. So I come here. If you see the view outside, I'd love to turn my laptop to show you the view outside. I will choose a place where I like to sit. I will. I like to do how I do it. And this has come, obviously, first time I did not get this, right? The second time I did not get this. Third time I'm able to command a little bit of all this. So yeah, so that's how it is. So yeah, so now I'm able to do what I want to do is a gift that I've reached to probably. Yeah, and you have gratitude for it, and you oh yeah, totally. It's 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 I, either it's a destiny multiplied by um, persistence. Yeah, it's it's got multiplied. Destiny was there that I was supposed to be not doing. It got multiplied to a scale because of my persistence and whatever thing that I as a childhood I was told that you will be successful. When you have a, a day that's not so good, how do you get back on even keel? Oh, day you know, frankly very limited because the mood is very high. The mood is very high. Um, I, don't, I don't really remember a really bad day since a couple of years. But um, how do I get back to a good thing? I talk, like in the car, I do not listen to radio music. I talk to my friends all the time. So I think talking to your friends makes, makes, makes that smile and you can talk that rogue language with your engineering friends especially. So I do that all the time. So yeah, so maybe, maybe the Chamkila movie. I don't know if you've seen it. Chamka Cham, Cham, whatever that's called in Netflix. So I, I'm the uh, uh, as like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Right now, Dr. Jekyll. In in after as I enter my car, I reach home. I'm a Mr. Hyde. I'm the fun guy. I'm the crazy guy. Also. So, yeah. Beautiful. I just had. A, I I think De Jekyll and Hyde both are. You know, they were on a positive negative spectrum, but both these personalities seem to be on the positives. <laughs> Yeah, probably, probably. I'm not going in killing people. That's the only thing. I'll do. <laughs> you're, so, yeah. you're killing it with whatever it is that yeah, you're yeah, working on. Right? The wilder side of me on the, when I go off of this, yeah. Lovely to have had this conversation. I know we didn't get delve into the specifics of business, but it was more the spirit of what makes a person uh, enjoy what they do, do it well, and they're not burning uh, all ends of this, the candle. They are prioritizing what is important to them, which is health and relationships, and really knows what really matters and have that confidence in oneself uh, to do what one is meant to do. And I use you use the term destiny. Uh, Visham, thank you so much for this time and this conversation. And uh, I have one fleeting statement to make for the entrepreneurs for sure. So during COVID, me and my wife applied for the US EB-5 visa. You pay a million dollars and get the EB-5. But we realized the India story is extremely huge. Remember when all these industrialists, all the Godrej's or the world, we also just think, how did they become big, right? Because when they came from Pakistan, they all got some benefits and all that. India is again in that story. India is going to go really big in the next 20, 30 years. So anyone who's thinking, two, two people in the corporate world, if a couple, please, one of you leave it, join and become an entrepreneur. India's story in the next 20, 30 years is going to be the globe's best story. Do not miss on it. Do not let your kids say, why did not my dad do something and build a great a business or something. So I encourage everyone to do it. Everybody has a different space, different uh, strength. Where you get partners, get the right players, but do it. Do not miss the story of India. If anybody misses the story, I'll be upset. Yeah. That's and do mind. your homework. And here's a guy who's done his homework and he's telling us that it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Please do your homework. Obviously, don't just jump into the river. Do understand how to swim at least a basic level. And and stay resilient. I think that's also something that Vishal yes, has told not us. Not only resilient. There could be times that you realize that this business is not working. It's okay to move on. Don't be just resilient and just try to break an iron ball. And the role of good mentors uh, and, you know, being judicious about that. There are times that people get good mentors. I've had the most amazing people on my board, but like that again was hustle. But there are times when you can self-innovate and do it. I know of a lot of youngsters today who are the younger ones who have done it without mentors. So we have this, we people of our age group have this thing, hey, we have to have mentors. You're this. I think self-learning and uh, your own confidence can sometimes be a thing that allows you to innovate and make something absolutely fresh. Yeah. And... Uh... 
are you open to young people reaching out to you on linkedin and you know, linkedin is the like, best way yeah if there's somebody writes something which is right because obviously i get a lot of linkedin messages and requests if it, i do read each of them i take out them sometimes randomly i do i wherever i see something where somebody needs help in something specific which is what i can really help i do reply on that linkedin okay. is very thank you for that access also thank that you've given people you. well, thank thanks you. visham have a nice day bye bye bye